right, all right. There we're he back. is. We're Here back. We are. <laughs> we are uh, we're feeling pretty spooky tonight. We've got a uh, little decor here from the guys in the Thunderdome, the marketing team. So they, uh, they dress the set up real nice. We're all hopped up on Smarties and candy and, you know, things like that to get us through the show tonight. And uh, what are we going to do? We're talking about uh, rods for kids. Yeah. So, you know, we get a lot of requests for, um, you know, hey, I want to build my son or my daughter a rod. Yes. And, uh, you know, what do I need? What do I need to build? What, what rod blank? What guides? What real seat? What do I need to build the rod for the kid, right? Absolutely. So, keeping with the theme of Halloween, as you guys can see. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're we'll talking about tonight. Perfect. And, you know, the speaking of that, you know, the one of the best parts of rod building is not just like ah, I got to build my kid a rod or my nephew or niece or grandson or granddaughter, whatever, you know, it's really becoming a little bit of family time. Yeah. You know, it can be, you know, uh, father, daughter, father, son, mother, daughter, you know, it, it can be any combination that you think of uh, because honestly, and we'll touch on this later, but we have an education program and we have little kids up to grandmas and great grandpas and all that stuff, building fishing rods. So this is not something that, you know, typically you're too young for or you're too old for. So, right. um, you know, get, get the kids involved, get anybody involved. And this is a great place to start because, you know, everybody loves to fish and do that. And of course, you know, we've, we've all done little arts and crafts on the kitchen countertop growing up, whether it's a school project, that is due tomorrow uh, that we didn't tell mom or dad about. Uh, but now we can do something a little more relaxing. There's no deadlines and it's all fun and games. So we're gonna, we're gonna touch on a little bit of that stuff. Um, we're gonna do you know, a little bit of guide spacing talk. We're gonna show you guys how to do a couple little fun decorative things. You know, we've shown some stuff before, but, but not all of it. And then of course we're gonna talk about how to take maybe a rod blank that you like, pare it down. We're going to talk about cutting a rod blank. We're going to talk about some blanks and some blank models mm -hmm. and series to maybe think about, get you headed in that direction. You know, because like, let's be honest, not every seven-year-old can handle a FP936 right. flipping stick. So yeah. we got to kind of tailor it to the fish they're catching, the gear they're using, you know, are they five are they 10 are they 12 years old you know whatever so we're going to go all over uh, we're going to go over all of those things tonight. yep including our, our rod building classes which we offer yes. in person and also remote virtual classes yeah we're going to dive in some details for those as well so absolutely and then of course we've always got the giveaways yep so when we go through this you know y'all have been here for the giveaways and you gotta you gotta stay through it uh the guys in the war room will pick them we're gonna do couple different things. We're going to do some magic marbles, some jig skins, some things like that, some decorative stuff that the kids like, get them involved. Uh, and then, of course, we've got uh, color series rod blanks because, let's be honest, there's a lot of cool colors in that lineup, a lot of great models that not only adults can use but are great for the, for the little ones as well. And then, of course, we're going to give away a whole kit, CRB color series kit. So a lot of cool things tonight to go over little tricking, little treating. It's going to be good. We've got, uh, we've got the set. We're in the graveyard tonight. Hoffman and the guys in the design room, they, uh, they dressed it up nicely for us tonight. So uh, what do you say we get this thing rolling? Let's do it. All right. Jay, we ready, buddy? Let's hit it. There is nothing wrong, nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. Episode 80. Episode 80. So building rods for kids. Everybody's involved. Yeah, whole family. Absolutely. Um, all right. So 
couple little things here first. Yep. We've got a Mudhole Live Rob Builders group out there. 16,000 members. And of course, you know, everybody knows it's the biggest, it's the best. And there was a lot of good chatter in there this past week. Um, some people showing some stuff off, doing a few tips, doing a few tricks, getting ready for the holidays. Um, and real quick, this really wasn't on the agenda. Uh, but here at Mudhole, we do a lot of cool things, classes being one of them. Uh, but we had a really cool visit this past weekend. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we had, uh, we had Billy Vavona and the Nerbs. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know a bunch of them by name, so I'm not going to go and try to name some people and leave some people out. Uh, but I do know Billy. I got to, uh, I mean, for years. And I know you even know him better than I do. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was cool because we got to touch base at ICAST where we kind of, not we, not including me, but uh, I know Brooke and then the team here and, and Billy, they kind of hatched this plan to come down to the mud hole and bring everybody. And uh, I unfortunately was not here for it. But that's just another great kind of rod building community vibe we got going on here that those men and women that are in the NURBS show up in the group. They help out. Of course, Billy's in there a lot. And then, of course, they did a thing here, which was really cool. Because if you have not been here, we're not just front office in a warehouse. We have an education center. We got the showroom. We got all that. So they took over the place. And uh, from what I hear, it was pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. I think they spent the entire Saturday just talking about, you know, custom EVA grips and yeah. all that goes along with that. So I'm sure it was a a fun-filled day and lots of info being tossed around. So. Yeah, I can't even imagine if, if you didn't have like a full notepad empty when you came, you were not prepared, I'm sure. So, uh, but yeah, that, that's really cool. So back on track, uh, we talked about the group. Of course, tonight on the show, we're going to be using products, okay? And uh, this is now a couple shows running. We've got a list of those products. So after you guys are done watching the show, all you got to do is run over to mudhole.com slash MHL, and that's going to give you kind of a collection of everything we use on the show tonight, so you don't have to hunt and peck all over the website. Uh, if you want to get you a magic marble, certain color, or something we used, or one of these blanks we talk about, it's going to be there, and then you can venture out and shop the whole site after that. So that's a, a really cool landing page that, uh, that Mike and everybody put together there for us. So, uh, so yeah, what else, what else you got? Uh, well, I think we should probably just jump right in, right? I we, think so. We're going to do, uh, well, actually, we got a, we got a request real quick. Um, oh, yeah? So, the, the Halloween flyer that just hit most people's homes, probably, yeah. within the past week or so, has a themed rod on the front, as well as uh, Beetlejuice, right? So, what, who, what, who is it? Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, there it is. Yeah. You got to say it three times, no, right? No, 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 is that no, no, the move? I think it's three, yeah. Is it three? I think um, so. so Jeremy from YouTube, he wanted to see the Beetlejuice rod, and here it is. There it is. Uh, and the cool thing is, is this wasn't, this wasn't all for show. Right. This, this, this put the dough together. So we built this, and we took it up to the Haba in Boston, and we caught stripers on this thing. So. We didn't Photoshop this together and, and put all that. And uh, our man Guffy did get in a Beetlejuice costume <laughs> and did hold a striper that he caught on this rod. He was ready. We had the fish boat side, keep it in the water. We had Brian Coombs, who is just, I call him Big Fish Brian, because we were on some really, really cool stuff. Guffy fought the fish. Brian had the fish boat side, keeping fish in the water, you know, the utmost care because that fishery is very cool. And it's very important to treat those fish properly. So Gubby fights the fish. I've got the rod. He's putting the costume on. We get all set. Brian hands him the fish. Boom, boom, boom. Couple shots. Fish goes back in the water and Guffy gets out of the costume and, uh, and then we just kept fishing. We actually had to clean it up a little bit because we got a little, we had fish scales and, you know, we were using mackerel and doing some bump trolling up there and yeah. This one got pretty dirty, but this is the one we took up there. It, yeah. was, it was pretty cool. I mean, we had a ball. Uh, this is the SW80ML. Gotcha. Okay. So it's, uh, I, I really liked it. You know, I just went downstairs and did one of the, oh, yeah, that feels nice. You know? <laughs> that works. But uh, now we put on the deflection board and, and put everything together, and 
it really, really worked well. Yeah. So well, it was good to show you, you know, these these rods, especially used for the um, the covers on the flyers, the catalog, or you know, even rods you guys do at home, and you dress you dress them up fancy and decorative wraps and EVA foam grips and custom this and custom that. They can still perform and fish. They're Absolutely. not just for looks. So yeah, we just don't do this just to be like, oh, that's that's cool, and just leave it in the corner and collect yeah. dust. I mean, that was that was pretty neat to put something like that together because again, it took the whole team. You know, like yeah, I had you know wrapped some of the guides, put the thing, shaped the handle, but the idea didn't come from here. Right. You know, and then we had Matt and Taylor. Everybody's putting it together, and the Birdman's in there. He's doing a sketch, and then everybody goes, all right. So what do you think? And we're like, that's the one, let's build it. <laughs> so it was a really, really cool Thunderdome team effort there, putting it all together that awesome. made it onto a cover. So that was a, that was a blast. But uh, all right, we need to get into this. Remember, though, for those that are obviously watching this in a rerun or on YouTube or something, the guys go through and they timestamp things under YouTube because all of these shows are cataloged. So if you want to skip through all of this mumbo jumbo and you want to go right to where we start doing a demo or you want to jump to a giveaway or you want to jump to somewhere else, they catalog it and they put little bullet points in there. Uh, so if you don't want to watch the whole show and you just want to, maybe you want to go back to something I talked to, you can jump right back to something. So that's really cool. So, yeah. all right, where do cool. we start with this whole thing? Well, you got to start with blanks, right? Yep. So you talked earlier, the CRB color series, that is probably the number one starting point that at least we would recommend, right? Number one, you're going to get blanks down to five six. Yep. Which is, you know, five six, six foot max. That's probably where you're going to want to be at for a, you know, um, a rod for, you know, a, a younger, you know, person, right? Yeah. So, and we'll talk a bit, a little bit later about even taking that five six or six footer and possibly cutting it down even more. Of course. Right. Um, but, you know, the highlight of the color series is obviously colors, right? Yes. I think these come in 12 different colors. Mm -hmm. So you got a, you know, a couple, a couple different blues in there. We got a gray, we got an orange, a pink, uh, what else? A yellow. Red. Red, black, like forest white. forest green. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tons of different color options to choose from, as well as, which we'll get into a little bit later, matching real seat colors, yes. right? So you can, you can kind of... You know, if your son is his favorite color is green, you can get a green blank, a green real seat to match. You can throw in some green thread wraps. You or can, if it's orange. Or if it's orange. <laughs> but orange yes. and black for Halloween, right? Absolutely. Um, you can really, uh, you know, fine tune those colors and, and come up with a really cool color scheme for the entire rod. Exactly. Not just the blank. You can incorporate the other components to match it. So pretty cool there. Um, you know, we also have the, in the MHX series, we have the, uh, the shooter series, right? which those are going to be, I think around the six foot, mm -hmm. you know, mark. Yep. Um, they have a great action. Obviously six foot is a great length. Um, and even like the spinning or the spin jig series. Yeah. Both of those are great options. Um, so it kind of just depends on, you know, obviously price range, the CRB, very affordable price tag on that one. Yep. Color series is great. But if you do want to step up to that MHX series and look at the shooter, the spinning, or the spin jig series, you've got yeah. some options there as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that is an absolute great way to put it from however you're wanting to shop. Yeah. You want to shop in performance-wise, if you want to you get a budget, if you got whatever. And then, of course, all of the accessories, I think, is where it, where it ties it in, you know? Because you can put little, you know, Timmy or... Kathy or whoever right there with you, and you can start picking pieces and go, yeah, I really want a blue or I want a pink or I want a this. And, and that, that gets them in right from the beginning. Right. You know, then, boom, you hit the order button, and then now they're waiting on it. And, you know, a couple of days you get the package, and you open it up, and you go, yeah, look at that. That's right what we ordered. We got the pink and the blue and the this and that. And, and then you jump right in. So I think that's a great, you know, a great way to go about it. Now, when we're talking about cutting blanks, so... As you mentioned, this is a 5.6IS561L. Uh, so this is something that if you want to do a crappie rod, Ryan asked that earlier, what would you recommend for a crappie rod? This would be a really, really good one, whether you're a child, whether you're an adult. This is, it's short, it's light. This is something that you can put, you know, a 500 size reel, short rear grip, short foregrip, do a little, you don't have too many guides. It comes in all the colors, and you can go out and, you know, fill your cooler full of specs if you want. Yep. Now, when we start 
getting into, you know, maybe doing something like building a casting rod with a Zebco and, and things like that. You know, these Zebcos are pretty heavy, but not like, you know, you're like, oh, that's, that's too heavy. But what you do want to consider sometimes is the blank diameter, the length, kind of what action you're dealing with, you know, the age of, you know, the child that's going to be using it. Are they going to be able to handle and cast the Zebco? Is it going to be something where you cast it and go, here you go, hang on, watch the bobber go down, mm -hmm. things like that. <clears throat> so, and if you really start getting into a spin jig model, a spinning model, things like that, where you have a little more action and power to come into play there, um, you know, you're going to probably want to look at taking something that you like and cutting it. Yeah. Um, I think there was one time we had a broad blank and we might have taken, what, 10 inches off of it? I think uh, it, it's not how I recommend it. You know, usually we talk about cutting it with a Dremel tool. Hunter decided to just use the door on the side of his Silverado um, to take that blank down. Now, it's good because you did it from the butt section, not from the tip. Right. So we were able to take, you know, a 936 and, and then take it down to, like, actually what became the brainchild for the 885. Right. Because we had a flip and blank, the 936, the FP885 was nowhere to be even conceived yet mm -hmm. until Hunter crushed it in a car door. Then we cut it and we built one and went, huh, this would be really nice. Forward thinking. If it was mm -hmm. an 88 inch blank. <laughs> yeah. you know? um, so anyway, what I would do is I would look at, you know, something like an SJ42. Um, you know, those really, really popular spin jig models, especially if you're going to be, you know, maybe for a child that's more advanced or an older one that's going to be, you know, casting and working a lure and things like that. The, the CRB color series blanks are great if you're going to be casting and just winding, you know, a beetle spin or you're going to be watching a bobber go down. Uh, you know, they're a moderate, fast type of a flex, you know. Um, the powers range from an L to an H. But since we're cutting it, it's, it's going to vary a little. But right. I think, in my personal opinion, that if you were to cut a color series blank, you probably have a little more leeway in how much you cut that blank up rather than taking you know, an MHX, something like an SJ, that is more faster action and it has a little bit more of an aggressive taper in it because the more you cut out of it then you really start to notice wow the the action and the power of this blank is really changing yeah. whereas this blank here was a six foot medium so this is where this is what we cut out of this blank and this blank still actually feels pretty good being a 601M and you can see how much we took out of this so you know that percentage came out of this blank and we were still able to build it on a casting seat I would consider this to be moderate fast um, maybe even a little moderate You've got your Zebco 33, you got a beetle spin, you know, this is probably six pound test. And I mean, you can wear the panfish out <laughs> with something like this that's inexpensive that you can kind of cut up because this rod already is kind of moderate fast. There's not a huge taper in it. And you almost, it's almost foolproof. Yeah, almost foolproof. Definitely. And this is something that we definitely like you mentioned, the MHX blanks, you know, something that you still want to have that sensitivity and all those good benefits. You don't want to go chopping off a couple feet of that blank, right? right? But for the purpose of what we're doing tonight, for a kid's rod, um, you know, where the sensitivity and the lightweight and, and all that stuff doesn't play a huge factor. Sure. We're just out there having fun, right? Right. Uh, it's okay to do it in that instance. You know, Absolutely. you can take two, three feet, however many you want to. And, and again, gotta take it off the butt section. Never, ever 
and only uh, you know a yeah. once in a hundred uh, circumstance are you taking it off the tip. Sure, we're always taking it off the butt section. Yeah, no um, doubt. Because if you were to cut, you know, even two, three, four inches off the tip section, well, now you know. You it gotta, really change it. Yeah, you really change it. It's going to stiffen up that rod, and you you might not even be able to cast this this beetle spin or any kind of little panfish lure. So right. always take it off the butt section and not the tip. Yeah, and you know, I would love to be able to give you a uh, you know an equation that says. If you're looking at a CRB color series blank and you want to take this much or this much or whatever, you know, and you want it to be this action, then go to this power or whatever. You know, if I would recommend though, if you're going to take this much out of a blank, like the color series, you probably want to go up in power a little bit. Yeah. Because we're pulling a lot of power out of this blank right here in my hand, and you're going to be left with a lot of mid and tip section that is now the entire blank. So something that, you know, if you pulled this 561L and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, this feels about right. If you were to take that much out of this blank, you would end up with like a fly swatter. Yeah. And Good you're move. like, ooh, that's, <laughs> that's definitely not what I wanted. So again, I, I don't have a chart or a graph for you to say, if you're gonna take 24 inches out of the rear end of this blank, you need to go up to rod powers or something like that. But just keep that in mind because this being a 601M and taking that much out of it really actually turned out quite nice. Yeah. So definitely. Yeah. Got a couple good questions up here. Yeah. Uh, Chris, would you use uh, or could you use a, an ice fishing rod uh, for the little ones? Yes, you definitely could, Chris. One thing I would warn though is you would probably want to shoot for, you know, anywhere between like probably at least a 36 inch and, and, and longer. Yeah, and, and also make sure that you don't, you know, lean towards the lighter power rods. Make sure at least you have probably an M, yeah. a medium power and up. The only downside to some of those ice blanks or ice rods is they can be very, very light in power. Right. Almost like a noodle, you know, like a power noodle, right? For sure. It, it will almost double over, you know, almost like an ugly stick, if you can imagine. Yeah. You it's know. almost like you couldn't cast it. Right. It would be too light to cast. Um, so get, you know, anywhere from that, you know, medium and up. And, and probably want to shoot for maybe a 36 to maybe a 40 inch and yeah. higher length. Because I even think that 42L or 42M, that would actually probably be pretty good. That's what I caught that, that good size northern on. Yeah. Uh, now, granted, we weren't casting it through a hole in the ice, right? but I can imagine, you know, like it had good fish fighting ability. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't like the power noodle. It's just like a rigid section of blank with the last four inches are just like, yeah. go, go. You know, mm -hmm. that, just, that just buckles over. So, yeah, you want to stay out of something like that, but that's not a bad, yeah. you know, that's pretty good advice there. Uh, Sean, are these five, six rods pretty durable and kid tested? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, the color series blanks, I mean, again, best bang for your buck. They're going to be very durable. They're made of, um, you know, fiberglass mostly, uh, a little bit, a little bit of, um, well, mainly, you know, a little mix of both, but, uh -huh. um, they're very durable. Um, like Chris mentioned, they're a mod fast action, so they're not going to have, you know, a fast or even an extra fast action that could be yep. prone to, you know, blowing up the tip. So. Um, yeah, very durable. Yeah, it's good. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I use the 701L quite a bit. I mean, uh, not only for myself, but to hand it to a client. And we've pulled on fish and done things to an IS701L that I wouldn't recommend doing. And I was even like, ooh, and it was like, oh, okay. Well, that, that worked out. So yeah, whether it's kid tested or client tested or big kid tested, yeah, I, I would trust the, the color series to a lot of things. You know, if the kids are out there and they're fishing a little bit and then all of a sudden, you know, it's like they, they start doing one of these numbers and start fighting with it, you're probably gonna be okay. You know, that's not, that's not where I pull out the high modulus graphite, right. but uh, a color series, Probably, you know, it could throw a beetle spin and be a sword. I don't know, you know, save the princess with it, right? Might, might work. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Cool. And they are not fiberglass. I misspoke on that, obviously. But uh, they are graphite, and they are a lower grade of graphite, which mm -hmm. 
kind of does appeal to a little bit of the the fiberglass attributes, right? Right. The durability, you know. Uh, oh, well, absolutely. I mean, you know, when we talk in terms of graphite, you know, and you look at something like a high modulus and a, and a high end line is like 57 million. Yeah. You know, we're looking at like low 30s here, you know, 30 million, things like that. Things that are not going to be what we talked about earlier is, okay, we got six pound tests and a drop shot out here trying to win the Bassmaster Elite Series type of a rod blank. Yeah. We've got something that, you know, is a very durable grade of graphite and can take a, take a beating, you know? Take whatever your seven-year-old can throw right. at it. So, yeah, absolutely. All right, so now we have talked about that. Let me do a quick, before we start getting into the fun, fun stuff, although cutting up a blank is actually pretty fun. Um, let me show you at home real quick how I cut one, and then we can kind of go from there. So what I would do is, well, I don't have the wide enough tape, but so, <coughs> excuse me. What I typically do is, we don't have, no, that's, I usually try to use wider tape than this quarter inch tape. I usually try to use like half, but I'll show you here. You got some back here? Is that half? Oh yeah. Let me pull some of that. And you don't need a lot. So just a little bit of half inch tape here. Good? Cool. I know y'all are chasing me around a little bit. All right, so I take the half inch tape and I am going to create a spot here on the blank. I'm not gonna cut 24 inches, I'll just cut like four and a half or so. I'm gonna go around two, three times. Doesn't need to be crazy thick, right? What we're gonna do is, you don't have to cut like right in the middle of this, but cut on the tape, okay? That's, that's what it's there for. It's not to cut like right up to the edge. We're actually gonna cut through the tape. And what I tend to do is, is if I put a mark on the rod blank, I am then gonna put the tape over the top of that and then cut right through the tape. And what that does, does is it keeps things from like splintering and, and kind of getting out of hand. Yep. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get a Dremel tool. It's the best $39 or $49 I've ever spent in my whole life uh, for rod building purposes. And I'm gonna just put this right here that way uh, Steve running the zoom camera tonight can lock on that and uh, he's not going to chase me all over with it. So again, we got a Dremel tool. We've got the corded one here because it always seems like when I need the cordless one, the battery is out is dead and I don't want to stand around and wait for it. So we bought this one and I have one of the cutoff discs here. Uh, it's just one of those composite cutoff wheels. Uh, it cuts pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, as always, safety first and then teamwork. That's how we do it here. And I actually tend to support the blank in either the hand wrappers you see here. I use rod supports. Uh, if I've got the power wrapper and I got the pro stands and put it all in there and then I hang the section out that I'm gonna cut. But what I like to be able to do is run the Dremel and Dremel it, but you have to remember you can't go if you have a large diameter blank You can't like work your way through it because then your Dremel starts to turn on you So what you need to do is I start the cutting and then I work around the blank and usually that tends to work pretty good So Hunter is at a safe distance off yeah, everybody's steps back everybody's <laughs> got their goggles on and we're just gonna go ahead and cut this we do it live. All right, so just cut right clean through it like that. I was trying to go slow so everybody could see that. But then it kind of, you can see what happened there. It burns the tape a little bit. But the Dremel tool is spinning so fast it kind of sands it and cuts it at the same time. So it's typically nice and clean. I do always, you can see I had a little like kind of kind of cliffhanger there. You can just barely kind of see it. It that is why we use the tape. Because if that tape is not there, you have a much higher chance of that booger 
running on this blank. And that is to say if you're using a Dremel tool, if you're using a hacksaw, a real fine blade, however you want to cut this thing, those boogers turn into runs in this graphite. So what I then tend to do is I will take this piece and I will turn it up and sand it just a little bit on a little bit of high grit paper. And what that does is that'll knock that down. And I literally just stand it up and do a quick little figure eight. And then that way everything is nice and smooth. Uh, you can go back and touch that little uh, spot there to the side of the Dremel wheel if you want. Or like I said, you can run it real quick, do a little figure eight on a high grit paper. Take these off and uh, you're ready to go. So that's, that's how you can cut it. I cut it with a Dremel. You can cut it with a fine blade hacksaw. Uh, but I find so many other uses for that $39 Dremel that I just got to have one. It's hard to beat. Very that it easy, is. quick and easy, done. Perfect. All right. Cool. Well, that was cutting a blank. And like we said, you know, you can, you can take a five, six, six footer, cut two, three foot off of it if you want to. Mainly with just the CRB color series, you know. Yeah. If you start getting the MHX blanks, you might want to be a little more cautious. Not that you can't cut those blanks down, but you just need to be, uh, again, a little more cautious. Maybe two, three, four inches at the most. Yeah. Anything past that. And you're really going to start sacrificing, um, you know, power and also action. Um, yeah, I would venture to say that that's right. I mean, we get that question a lot. Like, how much can I cut off of this MB873 or MB843 or whatever? And we tell people all the time, like, two, three, four inches max, and then you change the blank. Yeah. So if you want to retain that blank's characteristics of action and power, and you're in one of those MHX or higher you know, nicer models. I, I'm not cutting more than two, three inches. Yep. Cool. Well, now that that's over, let's get into some fun stuff. Yeah, right? absolutely. So we have a rod up here, if you could uh, show us that. So we've talked about this on several uh, episodes of Mudhole Live before. Our magic marble, right? So you can magic marble grips, rail seats, blanks, uh, coasters, coffee mugs, TV remotes, TV remotes uh, you name it, and you can probably magic marble it. Yeah, no doubt. If it will fit into uh, your water canister, right? Right. Whatever that might be. Yeah. Um, but as you guys can see, the uh, the color combinations. This one has a uh, a what a blue, black. Um, so I think two shades of blue. Two shades of blue and a black thrown and a, in. And a black and. Because we prime this with white, you get white that comes through sometimes. Now, that can be on purpose or it can be by mistake. This, I don't know because <laughs> I didn't do it. But as I said, you can do, use it on purpose or by mistake, but it still looks pretty cool. You just have to take that into account when you're doing this. Yeah. So if you don't want the white to show through, you better make sure that you got plenty of magic marble on the surface of the water and that when you dip it, you got enough paint to go around. That's right. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Before we move on, I'm going to answer the question that probably has not been asked, but it gets asked every time. Can you magic marble and dip an entire blank? <laughs> Let's keep in mind here. You have to have enough surface area of water for the magic marble paint to cover, all right? Not only do you have to have enough surface area because as the part goes through it, that circle starts to shrink as the paint is laid onto the part, okay? So, you know, imagine like as the paint it dips in and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as it comes around this. Now, if you wanted to do a rod blank, you not only have to have enough surface area on the surface, but you gotta have enough depth on your canister. So somebody's like, oh, well, I'll just use a really long piece of PVC pipe. All right, but what's the diameter of the pipe? Because yeah, I can get I can get a 12 foot piece of section, you know, schedule 40, whatever from Home Depot. But 
is the diameter going to be enough? Because by the time that paint starts going around that blank, I don't know, you might need 12 inches of surface area if you got a seven foot blank. I have no idea because I've never tried this. But I'm just answering a question that gets asked every time. I haven't seen it asked yet, but that's what happens. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, you could magic marble a whole blank, but you better have a farm silo somewhere <laughs> full of water so that you could dip this stuff. I mean, yeah, you you know, pick up granddad's old farm vehicle and magic marble that, but you gotta have enough surface area and you gotta have enough water depth. Yeah. It's things to think about. That's your only limitation with this is is obviously the size of well, honestly the length. And, and size too, but honestly, the length is where you're gonna, you know, come into some trouble. But sure. an alternative to that would be uh, if you guys have any any hydro dippers in your in yeah. your area. Right. Um, you know, they have large, long tubs that they hydro dip parts and pieces into. Right. Blanks uh, could fall into that category. Yes. But these smaller, you know, court grips, reel seats, any of your other components, um, maybe besides guides. I'm not sure if I would do guides or not, but um, yeah, that's gonna be tough. Yeah, but anything in your handle area, um, especially, you can use this method with. So, yeah, and um, you could technically do like the split grip section. Yeah, you, you could know, definitely like, do that. If you only wanted to do like that part of the blank, mm -hmm. you know, you could probably get away with that there, you know, and then you got some magic marble in your split grip. Again, not the whole blank, but you know, and you can do this in just in the kitchen. Yeah, absolutely. So, what we got here is we've got our canister of water. And this is just plain tap water. It's room temperature. That's um, that's actually CRB high modulus water. Oh, you, you didn't tell me you put that. No, in. I didn't. Okay. Well, it's it's Halloween, so you know. Yeah. Coming soon. Right. Um, so we got our, our water, and I think this is. Didn't you get these at like Walmart? Maybe like a candy jar or like just a. I did. Yeah, it was like uh, it was in the arts and crafts section where you can like put different layers of beach sand for everywhere that there you, you traveled or. Gotcha lava rocks or whatever, yeah, so candy or something. This yeah. isn't anything special, any kind of plastic container. Um, doesn't even have to be plastic, really. But as you guys can see at the top, you definitely want something cheap that you, you know, might that toss you can later destroy. on. Yeah. Uh, because the paint will stick to the top, especially. Yeah. Um, Grandma's Waterford Crystal is no, not, not at all. recommended no. for this. Um, so we got our canister with water. Um, we obviously have our pa our paints here, so I'm going to use the same colors that we used earlier with right. the, the two blues and also the black. Now, you can use two, three, four, five, six, all the colors. Yeah, you could make it if as you wanted as you to. want, for sure. The color combination is completely up to you. Um, and then other than that, we have our components, which I've got a couple split grip pieces here along with... Um, a CRB palm swell real seat. That's nice. Now these are primed. Yes. Right. So we we put some. What we got over here? This is just some white primer paint. Yep. Nothing too fancy. Just um, a it, gloss white spray paint. Yeah. It it really doesn't. We have used a number of different primers. You know, we've used like a, just a rust oleum flat white primer. We've yep. used this. We've you know, that's not really. It just needs to be. What we recommend is it needs to be white if you want the colors to be as vivid and pop as possible. You can just take regular cork and dip it. But if you dip regular cork, now your colors are over cork, not over white. So the colors actually, you know, when we've done this, the colors are actually kind of muted and a little ugly, to be honest with you. But if you wanted to do really bright colors with a black background, you could prime this grip with a black primer, a gray primer. You could do a number of different things based on what you want the end result to be. Yeah. We're using white because we want the colors to be as vibrant and pop on camera and for y'all as possible. But just keep that in mind. If you do it over like a natural colored cork or burl or something, it's going to look weird because yeah. the colors are just going to kind of get mangled all in there. But if you use a solid color as a base, it could be pretty good. Yeah. So these were sprayed a couple hours ago. They're dry now, all good to go. Okay. We have a, um, I'm assuming this is probably a quarter inch uh, yeah, it mandrel. Yeah, took a quarter inch mandrel and we taped it off yep. so we and, could peel it. And yeah, so just maybe an inch or two up the mandrel, we put some tape on there so where our, our grip will actually just stop. It doesn't go on all the way. 
Just makes it so you can dip it in. You don't have to use a mandrel. All you need is something for this grip to, you know, to seat onto so you can actually dip it into the paint and water, right? Right. All right, so we got that done. Now, the colors. What I'm gonna do here is we have light blue, we have dark blue, and also black. And all I'm gonna do is do a couple drops. That was what, maybe three or four? Yeah. We'll do three or four of each. Yeah, this was a good, I don't know if they caught that. Sometimes the paint will bead up. If you like hit the surface really hard, it will bead and there'll be a like a blob mm -hmm. that falls to the bottom of this container. What you want to do is you want the paint to hit the surface of the water and tension around, you know, just the surface. So if it, you know, because we had this, we were messing with it earlier and we had shaken it up and then it sits a little and if you don't, if you're not constantly working it and shaking it, it will kind of bead and stuff like that. Because it is pretty much a paint. Right. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of tip. And, and what, what you, are you doing here? What you can also do is, you know, sometimes when you use that bottle and, and drop them in, it's kind of hard to place the drops where you want it to. For sure. Um, and, and sometimes the pattern is just kind of, they're just blobs of color in there. Right. And what you want to do is you can take, you know, I've got a disposable brush here. All I'm doing is kind of going in and spreading the colors out. Now you do have to be a little careful because sometimes you will grab the paint like that. That's what you don't want. But what the goal is, is just kind of barely work the brush in and just kind of, you're just swirling the colors around. Yeah, you're kind of creating like a design Almost like when we do regular marbling on the blank, right? Right, Yeah. exactly. So after you got that done and kind of incorporated all the colors together, all you gotta do next is dip in your piece. I'm actually, yeah, let's do this piece right here. And that way they could probably see it there. Yeah, so I'm gonna move over. Oh, he was already locked oh, on you. Sorry, Steve, sorry. We'll try again. <laughs> okay. And as you go in, you kinda wanna rotate the the piece that you're dipping so it makes sure that paint gets all the way around it. Yeah, it'll kind of give you like, it'll work your design around it, right? Right. And the cool thing is, is just because you're using the same colors that we used on this rod blank here, all right, let me get your paper towel ready. Yeah, I'm actually, you can already tell I didn't put enough paint in there. Okay. But we'll let it ride. So once you have completely submerged your piece, you don't want to just quickly pull it right back out because you're actually going to, there's still paint on the top of the surface. And what you're going to do is, if you pull this out now, you're going to pull all that extra paint on top. Now, it might look cool, it might not, but right. in this case, we're going to actually, Chris is going to go in and remove that top layer go for it. So you're just going to take a paper towel and kind of swirl it around, get rid of all that excess paint. And then see you can, it ends up on the paper towel there. And now we can get it out of the way. pull our piece out. And you can definitely see there. I think it's fine. A couple white patches, but all in all, not terrible. Yeah. Didn't have quite as much black as we did in that, uh, that first uh, that first set that uh, yeah. the guys did earlier, but eh, whatever. That's I mean, one thing. That's one thing about marbling is you. Yeah. It's 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 almost impossible to replicate the same thing every single time, right? Um, just but like, the cool thing is the kids are gonna love it. Yeah, and just like you mentioned earlier, um, just gonna get some of this water off of here, just like that. And the one thing you do not want to do is set it, set it down <laughs> immediately. Because what it will do is that paint is not completely set up just yet, and it will peel off. Right. So don't so, touch it. Like, don't uh, yeah. sit on the water. All don't, I'm doing don't is let just... let the kids grab it. Yeah. All I'm doing is just kind of getting excess water off of it. And then uh, I'm going to set it to the side. But that's the gist of it. It's just like you mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, you know, marbling on a rod blank. Let's see. Let's do this. There you go. We can set it uh, like in this if you want. Yeah, let's do that. Because we're not going to use this really. Yeah. Perfect. That should be okay. Yeah. It's just like marbling on a rod blank. It's 
a lot of guys are very good at kind of getting a very close yeah. representation each time, but it's almost impossible to do the same thing every yeah. single time. It's going to look a little bit different, especially this process, because you're throwing in water and surface tension. You know, you got a lot more variables in there than just always working on a rod blank with pigments, right? For sure. So, yep. but this is a really fun, you know, activity that you could do with your kids. Um, again, it doesn't have to be rod components. You can magic marble cups or right. you know all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, and you can practice on a lot of just whatever you've got around the house. Uh, Kind of get them used to it before you dive in with your components yeah. and go at it. Uh, there's a couple questions. Do you do you do any surface prep before the primer, sanding, degreasing, anything like that? It's coming out of CK Watson. Really, when we use um, when we use the cork, the good news is there's really nothing on the cork. I mean, yeah, I guess if you're handling it and things like that. Um, you know, if you wanted to give it a wipe down and make sure it's dry before you sprayed the primer on it, but I've never noticed an issue with it. Uh, the good news is, is the cork is porous, so boy does it take primer well. Yeah. So uh, that's that's the great part about it. Now, if you were gonna maybe magic marble over a section of the blank, and you wanted to prime the rod blank, I would probably take a little extra care in either, you know, scuffing it up a little bit or making sure it's very clean because that is a smooth surface. Or if you're, you know, gonna magic marble over, you know, like a metallic series, you know, that actually has paint on it already. So you wanna make sure that that is extremely clean and ready to take paint and stuff on top of it. Otherwise, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna be in kind of a, kind of a mess, yeah. so. Yeah, and that was cork that we used. Uh, I don't think I actually mentioned that. The, the pieces that we have, you know, primed here are cork. I feel like cork definitely works better as opposed to EVA. Yeah. It takes the paint a little bit better. It's easier to prime as well, obviously. Yeah. Um, I, th I think the only problem that I see with the EVA when we've, you know, kind of messed with it a little bit is it's not hard. If, if you squeeze it, you'll dimple and crack the paint. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, you could, you could take a white EVA and magic marble it, but there's a pretty good chance that even if you coat the outside of it, you can dimple it pretty easy. I mean, you'd have to put a lot of coat, a lot of coats of whatever you wanted to put on there, yeah. whether it's like spray urethane, whether it's rod finish, uh, whether it's like spar varnish, things like that, which you, you can use any and all of those. There's no like, oh, don't use that. You know, some people will use a spray urethane. Some people will put, you know, a nice coat of pro coat on it. You know, they y'all have seen us do that, and Buzz Butters does that on custom ice grips. Yep. He does the magic marble over the cork, and then he coats it with pro coat. So, um, you know, you do want some kind of a top coat because it's it's just bare paint at this point. You know, it's it could rub off, you could chip it, you could scratch it, you could do things like that. So pick you whether it's whether it's a pro coat, a spray urethane, things like that. Whatever you're comfortable working with cuz it's it's pretty easy to deal with in putting a top coat. You just kind of got to pick one. Yeah. Um, you know, if it if it's an ice handle or something like that, I'm typically using rod finish, you know. Um, but if it's a real seat, I'm typically using uh, like a spray clear urethane on it because then I can do a very light mist coat whereas I can't I can't get a coat on a real seat that the then the threads still work properly with rod finish that you can get when you shoot like a clear whether you've got an automotive type clear or that yeah. uh, you know spray urethane type stuff yeah. so that's kind of depends on what part you're using what clear coat maybe works best right. so uh, Sam, if you hit the wall of the water pitcher while you're dabbing the excess paint, will it smudge? Um, I wouldn't say it's really going to smudge. You know, if if once you dip it in and you're getting rid of the excess and you happen to maybe hit the side of the, the pitcher, it, you know, it's not going to ruin it, you know, by any means. It, it might, you might notice a little bit of paint that might stick to the side of the wall and come off your grip or whatever piece you're working with, but I don't think it's going to ruin it by any means. No, but it's pretty good. The, the water tension holds it pretty good. It's, yeah. it's not like, you know, if you really 
you know, if you were to drop it in there or something like that, it, it might have it. But the water tension does a pretty good job of keeping it stuck to the grip yeah. and not, you know, you don't have to be super careful with it. If you hit the grip with the paper towel coming yeah. out, oh uh, yeah, you're a mess. Yeah. You're going to have a problem. And uh, as far as the, the timeline on uh, drying, you know, I'd give it probably at least a couple hours before yeah. you touch it. Um, you know, like I can see that right now has a little bit of water still on it. Yeah. That's eventually just going to probably beat off or evaporate. It, it's not going to stay there. Right. Um, I would leave it like it is. Don't, don't cave in and try to dry that grip right now. Yeah, like dab it or like, I, I know you just uh -uh. want to just dab it, but yeah, do not. Give it a couple hours. It, it'll, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take a full 24 hours to cure no. anything crazy like that. Just give it a couple hours, let it set up. Then come back in, dry it off if you need to, check yeah. it out, see if it's good. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, just, just kind of let it chill and, and dry. For sure. I mean, I, I will say maybe a tip. I try to do all of the work to the grip, reaming it, getting it dry fitted. I try to do all of that before I do all the magic marbling and the finishing on it and stuff like that. Because I just know that okay, that looks perfect, and then now I'm going to ream it or I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do something to it. You know, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess it up somehow. So, you know, use a couple different sizes of, you know, arbors, I mean, I'm sorry, of uh, your mandrels if you need to arbor the mandrel a little bit. If you want to use, like, old scrap blanks that you use cutting out of the back of Timmy's new fishing rod and arbor that, you know, you don't have to have, like, really particular things, but... I would do all the work to that grip, reaming it or shaping it or doing whatever, so that when you're done, all you've got to do is glue it to the blank and let it be done. Because I could just see, you know, holding it and trying to ream it with a dr and drop it or something. Just, you know. Anyway, that's just something I thought of. Should I skip go? Cool, cool. All right, let's go on to the next one. Yeah? So, we talked about magic marble yep so the other cool um, decorative idea that you can do that's going to be uh, for one very inexpensive and two super easy to install mm -hmm. is the um, the rod wraps uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop you there uh -huh. I, did you not pay your credit card bill or are you worried about giving something away or what do you oh, think oh I guess I guess we could you want to give something away first before yeah. we go there I mean because I I thought you paid it yeah right I mean, we got we got we, one more to do do we I guess that was in the giveaway, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure. I just, you know. Well, let's talk about it, then we'll give it away. All right. Cool. cool. Let's do that. So, I've got the, the rod wraps. These are made, uh, these are, I guess, a form of jig skins made by American Tackle. Okay. Right? Um, so, I got two colors up here. I've got the pink and I think the blue. Okay. Right? They come in two sizes. This is the smaller size, which right. if you're building a kid's rod, more than likely you want to use a smaller size. Right. These do shrink, um, I think, like up to 80 or 90% of their diameter. Okay. So this is obviously, right, you can do that number right there. They're uh -huh. hollow inside. Yep. And so all you can kind of test fit what you need. Yeah, exactly. And so these are super easy. You can trim them to fit, whether you want to do it um, in the split grip area, in, for, in front of your foregrip. Right. You could put this under your guides if you wanted to, cut them in small little pieces. Exactly. Um, they're made to mimic an abalone pattern without having to actually yeah. You know, do the process of abalone, which can be a little tedious, a little expensive sure. for a kid's rod. This is a perfect fit. Cool thing to do, right? Yeah. Now, there's two ways, and we'll show, you want to show the heat, heat yeah. gun? Yeah, I'd like to show the heat so, gun way. We're going to show the heat gun uh, method. But essentially, all these need, it's almost like uh, shrink tubing, right? All you need is a little bit of heat, and this will shrink down to the diameter that, um, whether you're putting on the rod blank or whatever, right? So, we're going to show the heat gun. Another method you could use is actually hot water. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think it should be boiling necessarily. I can't remember offhand, but um, if you want to heat up some water, you could even use this canister again if you wanted to, and um, you know, slip this over whatever you're going to use, yep. and dip it right into the hot water, and that uh, this rod wrap will actually shrink. Or we're going to show the heat gun method. Yeah, because even if you had, uh, you know, steam gets awfully hot. So if you do not have a uh, 
if you do not have a heat gun at the house, you know, you can use the hot water method and dip. Or you could use the steam method. Mm -hmm. I think that'll get it done. Yeah. Hair dryer. Yeah, you can use a hair dryer. It doesn't have to be, you know, the Benford Deluxe 2100 heat gun that, you know, gets 9,000 degrees. Uh, it can be a hair dryer. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a spot on the rod blank. I'm not going to trim and cut this because I'm just going to show it full length so you guys can see on camera. Now, I will turn this around because this is the back side and you can sort of see that there is a seam on the back. Okay, So keep that in mind when you're placing this because what you don't want is you don't want that seam on the side that you don't want the seam, if that makes sense, <laughs> right? So wherever you want it, just be aware that that seam is there. So just like with anything, Can you hold it. Yep. Just like with anything, I'm not going to turn this on high. I'm going to turn it on low, and we're going to work up and back on this jig skin so that, you know, we're not going to burn it. We're not going to melt the blank. We're not going to hurt anybody. We're just going to see what happens. I'm actually going to work because you can see, yeah. You can see, even on low, it only takes a few seconds for that to shrink down. I'm just going kind of careful. Still got me there, buddy? Gotcha. My man. And you can see, I'll do it like, I'll do one like real quick here on the end. You can see kind of how quick that can happen, right? So just be careful. And then I just go over the entire thing and work my way back and forth over the seams because there will be little like ridges and stuff in it, but they smooth themselves out as you kind of work through That used to be a little section of a ridge there that's kind of flattened itself out. This is not one of those get in a rush kind of deals, you know. Ooh, that's what happens when you accidentally go to high. So yeah, there you go. And it, it's a little warm. It's not too bad. Feels pretty good. And that looks good with that blank, you know. Kind of have a Nice little transition there. And the good thing is, we didn't have to worry about abalone shell. We didn't, you know, it's inexpensive. It's very durable. It takes finish very well. Mm -hmm. You can just go right over the top of it. You can do a little thread work. You can add a decal. You can do all of those things. Plus, we're building a kid's rod here. So you can have your little rod builder right there next to you, whether you want, you know, him or her to run the hair dryer, or you do the hair dryer and they turn the blank or whatever, you can get them involved. Yep. You know, this isn't something that, you know, has any kind of like crazy dangerous pieces and parts and, and things like that. Um, you know, just safety first. Keep yep. an eye on them and, and, you know, they can dip their favorite colors. They can put this. Uh, they can get them a, you know, custom decal with their name on it. Things like that. So, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And again, super inexpensive. These are only two, three bucks a piece, right? Mm -hmm. Four colors, two sizes. Yep. Um, and again, it's, it's like Chris said, it's getting them involved with tasks that are easy to do, but also can really dress up that rod yep. and add to the overall, you know, value and fun of it. So. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, you want to give something away now? Let's do it now. Why not? All right. So we're going to do three colors of the Magic Marble paints. All right. And we're going to do two of our, our jigskin rod wraps, right? Sounds good to me. All right. And the winner is from Facebook, Jack Hartzell. Cool. Jack Hartzell. Congrats. Great prize there. Sweet. Cool. So I'll get you started. You can magic marble a couple things and add some rod wraps to your next rod. Yes. Um, if, so since we did a few demos here, hmm? 
if the folks at home want to get the kids into rod building. Maybe they're not necessarily a builder themselves. Mm -hmm. We have a few options. We do. So let's go over that here really quickly because there's some cool things that are going on that I don't think get enough love. Yeah. Um, and things that you know y'all might not know about. So let's walk through that. So let's do. Let's talk about our rod building classes, right? Yeah. So for one, um, we have the remote rod building classes or virtual classes, and we also have the in-person classes. Now the virtual classes or remote classes have been going on, um, you know, since the pandemic happened, mm -hmm. uh, a little over a year and a half or so now. Um, these are great if not only you know you at home as a, a parent um, want to take on you know rod building and include um, your child, um, you know, but so you can actually do this this remote rod building class together. And you only have to pay for the one, the seat or admission into the class. So, for instance, if you and your child want to do it, only have to do one seat, right? right? And there's no age limit required. You can do the class together. Typically, it's made up of uh, a three-day series, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which are a couple hours each day, okay. right? So you kind of break up. You know, you don't have to do it all in one day and sit down and, and knock this rod out all at one time. Exactly. You can divide it up over a couple of days. And, and knock it out in a, you know, a series. Um, so that's our remote rod building class, right? We also have our in-person rod building class, mm -hmm. which are held um, you know, in our classroom, in our, uh, what did you refer to it? Or the the, education, the center. Educa education center here at Mudhole. Um, I think our next um, you know, beginner rod building class mm -hmm. is, I believe in January, we also have, throughout the rest of this year, we have more specific rod building classes. Yes. Uh, I think we have a, what is it? Um, what's the next one? Oh, I lost my train of thought, sorry. Well, you know, we've done ones in the past. It's like a surf rod. Surf rod. I think that's actually the next one. Is it? Surf okay. I believe so. And we've done an inshore rod. We've done a fly rod. And we've right. done, you know, so it's not only beginner learn how to build your first fishing rod, which we have, mm -hmm. but now, uh, recently we've been doing you know come join for you know a little bit advanced or something more specific because there's rod builders out there that you know that maybe they only want a fly rod or you know they want the rod that they build to be one that they can use because they're an avid surf fisherman right so there you go yeah that's why we got it um so our in-person classes uh they do require you to be at least 15 years of age sure right and um, so, you know, for instance, if you and you want to bring your 15, 16 year old son or daughter, um, you will have to buy separate tickets per person. Right. So that is something that is a little bit different than the remote classes. Um, but the in-person class, um, it's, it's very detailed. You get the rod knocked out in one day. Okay. So it's, it's an all day, 9 a.m. to usually 4 or 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. It's an all day event. Um, start to finish, you know, complete rod build. And then the following day on Sunday, there's about, uh, I think, you know, three to five hours of advanced techniques that they go over. Right. right? Yeah. I mean, that's where they talk about marbling, mm -hmm. where they talk about a little bit of thread work, where they talk about, you know, shaping grips and things like that. So that's a great part is if you can make it, oh, it's worth it. But if you're pressed for time, you know, you can technically come in, pick up the rod that you built the day before. It's dry overnight and if you got to go because you got a prior engagement you can go yeah um but and the great thing about that is is you know you you pretty much you sit down you got your workspace you got one of the incredible you know there's a group of teachers there um and they're walking you through the whole time and if you want to kind of go on your own speed and you don't feel like you need help that's fine they're not going to hover over your shoulder but all you got to do they're just a quick little put your hand up and say hey I can't figure this out they'll get it figured out for yep. you. that's the best part yeah. so two different options there whether you want to do the remote class or the in-person class uh, I believe they're actually the same price I think it's $199 okay um, in both of those classes you do get mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the equipment to actually continue rod building you yes. know you don't walk away with just your first rod you actually get you know the hand wrapper some equipment some thread um, included in that price Wonderful. so cool. you know that's that's an added bonus there too Sounds um, good. another you know besides the rod building classes yeah. if any of you guys out there are interested in rod building and you want to get that kind of startup 
tool kit, tool bundle. Okay. Um, our FSB-2 is the kit that you're going to want to get. Yeah. That has the hand wrapper. It's got the rod dryer. It's got you know thread. It's got the reamers. It's got I could go on and on. It's All got, of it. And it's got it comes in a box yep. about like yay, and you can just people go, what do I need to start rod building? That. Yep. And if you'll notice on, on our new website, most of the rod kits that you'll, you know, if you view online, you'll actually see that you can add an FSB-2 yeah, kit a good feature. to any rod kit, and you actually will get, um, you know, a discount on top of that. Okay. So you kind of create your own turnkey kit, so Perfect. to speak. Perfect. Um, so if you guys see that pop up, um, again, FSB-2, that's the number one go-to. That's it. Get started in rod building. That's the kit that you want to get. That's the best Perfect. value. So I love it. Um, now, for I wouldn't say just for the kids, but we do have an education program. Yep. So Anthony here in the building, uh, I think he's been here longer than I've been here. He has been to the FFA stuff. He's spoken in front of the scouts. He's been to youth groups. He's help teachers and, you know, uh, you know, back in the day, even before us, you know, they had like shop class, right? So, um, you know, they still have some of that. Some of it is kind of facilitated through the FFA, which that FFA National Convention is coming up and we'll have a team there with Anthony that's in booth 103. So for those that participate in the FFA and, you know, maybe your son or daughter or grandson or, grand, you know, they're going to go to the national convention. It's usually in like, I don't remember. It's been in, I went to the one in like Indianapolis. Indianapolis it's yeah. been in Nashville. It's been in a couple different areas, but it's cool because it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kids that have gotten to that point. And then there's great vendors, you know, like Steel and Hutz Varna and John Deere and Mudhole Custom Tackle, you know, they're there. They got booths set up and you can learn how to build a fishing rod. Yeah. Plus, Anthony and the team, like, you know, Todd, I know, has been involved in that a lot. Uh, one of the other Chris's here, Chris Norton, has been involved in that a lot. You know, they've been around, and they have taken rod building into 650 schools now. So that's in the United States. There's some in Canada. There's some in Australia. And, of course, that not only is just in schools, but as I had mentioned before, it's youth groups and scouts and 4-H clubs and things like that. So we've got somewhere around about 3,500 students that are completing the program. And just this year, Anthony and his information is on the sheet there. So if you are a teacher in the school system, Anthony can teach the teachers. He calls it teaching the teacher rod building classes. So. He's even taught 79 new teachers just this year. So he's been a busy man in there. And uh, it's really, really cool. So again, if you know a teacher, if you're a teacher, and you know want to get that involved in your child's school or youth group or 4-H club or whatever, that's Anthony. That's his email right there at the bottom of the screen. Get him involved, because it's really, really pretty cool. Like I said, I. I never was involved in the FFA or anything like that, and, and I probably five or six years ago, I got to go and help you know the guys represent and run the booth and whatnot at the, at the convention there in Indian. Whoa. Yeah. I'm talking livestock and tractors and trailers and cool stuff. I mean, there is stuff everywhere, and it's awesome. Yeah, and the kids love it, you know? We do little rod demos, we do things, and you know, we get, they come running up and they're like, hey, 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 look at this picture of this fish I caught on that rod that we did, you know, with Mr. Henley <laughs> class or whatever. So it was pretty neat. So yep. pretty neat. And those, the workshop, the classes that, uh, that Anthony teaches to the teachers, those are virtual. Yes. So they're, they're not in person. So yeah. especially, you know, with, with school, you know, just starting up. Difficult for teachers to, to make, you know, trips down here to Mudhole or, you know, any in-person stuff right now. Um, yeah. So those are virtual. Um, so just to, you know, just in case anyone was wondering or curious, um, those are a little bit easier to attend. So No doubt. All right. Let's talk a little bit about putting one of these together, okay? And we're going to talk about on the CRB Rod Blank, 
and we're going to give one away. Let's do it. So we're going to give away a CRB color series rod blank. Now, um, you can really, I don't think we put a limit, did we? I mean, we can do pretty much any size, any color. I thought you were talking about a credit card. No, no, but I, I know we put a five, six in there, but if you really got to have like a six footer or something like that, you know, they're not going to twist my arm, right, you know? Right, right, I mean, that's just, that's just me. I'm just going to, you know, if you really got to have a seven footer or something, I might be able to make that happen if we've got it in stock. But yeah. we did set aside some five sixes, but, you know, whatever. It's Halloween. That might be my little trick or treat. Uh, so the CRB Color Series Rod Blank, we're doing Brian Haggerty. So, congratulations, Brian. You are required to build it with a Zebco, though. So, <laughs> even if it's just for you, you know, you gotta, you gotta do it. Anyway, all right, so let's talk about this setup here really, really quick, why we did it, and maybe you guys can then run with that, all right? So, a couple years ago, we decided that we needed to bring back a pistol grip. Surprise, mm. Surprisingly enough, uh, you know, pistol grips were, uh, gosh, I don't know how long they date back. Maybe like old news. 70s, maybe, possibly 80s. Oh, I, for sure. I don't know, 30, 40 years ago. Um, I remember yeah. one of my first bait casters that I picked up, it was my dad's, and this was a loose speed stick. Mm -hmm. And I want to say it was only like a six footer. Yeah. Like there were no seven foot rods back then. Nope. It was like a five six or a six footer. You know, I look like vintage Bill Dance sitting <laughs> on the front of the bass boat with a pistol grip or Hank Parker or somebody with my lose. I think it was a lose speed stick. Speed stick, yeah. Yeah. So, and we had a pistol grip, which, I mean, you know, that was the first bait caster. Of course, I had a Zebco before that with, you know, it might have been Spider Man or He Man, but it had a pistol grip on it. So, we have it in EVA, mm -hmm. and we got it in cork too. Right? Correct. Yep. Sweet. So there you go. We, of course, did it in the black EVA, so we did a Halloween deal. But this uh, pistol grip, you just thread the blank all the way down to the bottom. There's a stop point. Pro paste it in there, glue it up, maybe a little arbor inside of here, and you're ready to rock. Then, same thing, moving forward, we've got a CRB Color Series reel seat. This is the standard trigger casting seat from CRB. Matches all the colors in the color series rod blank. So that's a no-brainer. And then, of course, out here, you can do anything. This is just a slightly turned down foregrip. We didn't want to take too much away from putting a little bit of decorative thread out here. And plus, you know, seven-year-old or eight-year-old is probably not going to be using, you know, a fighting belt and a big giant foregrip on this thing anyway. So we tried to keep it as low profile and as light as possible. Now, moving on to the grips. I, I'm sorry, moving on to the guides. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to ask, well, I want guide spacing for my cut down IS-70. All right, look, there's going to be a little bit of some blank deflection that you're going to need to do here. Um, again, we have talked about guide spacing and, and guide prep and all that stuff here before. One thing to pay attention to, all right? I'm going to hold it steady for you there, Steve. These are, hang on, let me take this beetle spin off of here. All right, looks like a gummy worm on that. All right, so this guide on here is the DF model from CRB, okay? This is like old school, but we still got them. It's in the CRB family. It's a standard ring. What it does is it gives you a double foot and some height without having to use like a 30 or a, or a true like just spinning guide. Because, Steve, if we can back out and get the guide and the Zebco here together, you can see this Zebco is far from a low profile, right? You can see that line comes out of that Zebco and we're working with a little bit of cone of flight here. <laughs> Never really thought I would have a cone of flight on a casting rod, but here we are. So keep in mind, this DF model, standard ring, CRB family. The great thing about this 
is you can also get it in an SSR version. So if, you know, if the kids are a little bit harder on stuff than most, and they might turn this rod blank into a lightsaber, there is an SSR version. So there is no ceramic ring to break out of here. Uh, even though this one is, is durable, you're not going to get much more durable than an SSR version. And of course, just like all the other SSRs, there's four colors. They're stainless. They're pretty much indestructible. All that kind of cool stuff. So there you have it. That's going to be kind of your guide train. Now, can you run it on down to some single footers? Oh, you absolutely can. I'm just giving you something to think about and how to combat the height of this Zebco without having to put, you know, a 25 double footer out here. Um, get a little height, still maintain a fairly small ring, and yeah, you can work it on down to a five ring if you want, and even some single footers if you want. But that's where I'm at here putting all this together. And this rod was put together and built by our man TikTok here in the building. So Jake did a good job with this one. Uh, mm -hmm. Did a little decorative stuff, put the guides on here, give us an option and something for y'all to think about at home when you're putting together a kid's rod. So, yep. yeah. Pretty straightforward. I think that's a 16, probably down to like an eight. Yeah, probably or a six, six even. Maybe, yeah, could be a six. Cool. And of course, you got the matching tip top and all that. All it is is, like I said, a CRB standard ring. So, that's, good stuff. That's the name of the game. When Good stuff. When uh, building for a kid's rod, a couple things to look out for. Yeah. Um, obviously, probably want to keep it relatively inexpensive. Yeah. Because uh, it might get in a fight with a ceiling fan it, real quick. A, uh, a lightsaber, a ceiling fan. Um, yeah, the list goes on and on, on there. On and on. Uh, so, and with that, you want to keep it durable. Yes. Right? So, SSR guides or even the standard um, ring in the DF CRB guides. Right. Um, you know, and, and all you need is, you know, that's what a probably a four, four and a half foot rod with it chopped down. Yep. You're only looking at four or five guides here, right? Right. Yeah, it's, it's turning into like an ice rod at that point a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. You know? Um, so yeah, durable, relatively inexpensive, yeah. and spice it up with a little bit of, of decorative features, yeah. whether it be the magic marble, the, the rod skins, or the, um, the rod wraps. Yeah. Um, custom decal. Custom decals. Put their name on it, put a fish on it. Yeah. Something like that, and those are all things that no they might not be able to sit down and wrap a guide but they can they can help with the magic marble they can help with the you know the the skins they can put their decal on it um, you know and, and let them go wild I mean you could we didn't show it tonight but yeah you can technically let them use paint and go crazy and then just put finish over it yeah and then there you go you've they've marbled their own rod you know just finger painting and, and you're you're ready to go. Just put a little rod finish on it and you're ready to rock. That's it. So there's no reason that that won't fish. And of course I can promise you they're gonna, you know, they're gonna remember that a little bit more than, you know, yeah, the Spider-Man one or the the frozen, uh, you know, Snoopy rod or whatever from Walmart's pretty cool, but this one's cooler, I promise. So, what, uh, we got any other questions that Let's we missed see. Uh, before we give away the final thing? Yeah, another question, uh, I think we hit on this earlier. Uh, do you seal the grip with uh, anything after you dip it in the magic marble, like a clear coat? Yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. You want to do, um, what'd you say, the spar varnish? Yeah, you can any do kind of clear, coat, clear top urethane, coat. that. And if you're, if you're putting it on a grip, you can, you can get away with rod finish. But if you're putting it on a real seat where there's like threads and stuff, you, you can't put like high build yeah. on that and expect the threading to still work. Yeah. So it, it depends a little bit. And one tip for real seats, by the way, which we did not hit on earlier, make sure you tape off the threads for your real seat. Okay. You don't necessarily need to magic marble the threads. That's only going to lead to once you put this hood on mm -hmm. and you start, you know, cranking it down. Yep. That magic marble is going to kind of peel off. Sure. So just tape off your threads. Don't worry about magic marbling those. Um, just do the actual body and not the threads. Right. And what you can do is you can get a hidden thread hood. Great idea. That you slide. It's like uh, I use it on my spinning reels, mm -hmm. spinning rods, the VSS. 
So then that hood slides over, and then that little piece of cork, you can marble that to match that. It all locks down, Perfect. and everybody's happy. Great idea. Um, rough guy crew down there, is there any rods that you can fish saltwater for a kid that's heavy, but also 6'6", so they can cast? Um, what I'm going to probably look at if I'm in your shoes, I'm not quite sure which, when you say heavy, but if you're casting it, you know, it's obviously not like a bottom rod. But what I would do is kind of the, kind of the grown cousin of the CRB series along the same lines and actions and durability is actually our inshore series in MHX. And we have a couple heavier models of the inshore series. So there is like an L844. That's a, that's a pretty, pretty beefy inshore rod. Uh, very durable, and you can then cut that down a little bit, start to get that rod to 6.6. Six. Uh, I mean, shoot, we even have an L905 if you really want to start to get wild, and you can chop some out of that, get it closer to that 6.6, six, and that rod's pretty beefy. I mean, we've even, you know, used the L904 to catch, like, small tarpon and big kudas and, and some different things like that. So, I mean, that's not too far to go. You know, you're not cutting two foot out of that rod, per se. You know, if you're just going to take a foot out of it to get it to 6.6, six, I would probably venture off and look at the specs in the inshore models, like the L844, L904, L905, things like that. That will probably get it done. Um, Dustin, can you put rod skins on an ice rod? Whew, those ice rods are so thin. I don't think they're going to shrink down that much. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to do my best to try to do some, some thread work. Um, it's just going to be tough trying to do a, a rod skin or even do abalone. That's, that's pretty tough. Yeah. You know. Now what you can do and what Chris did um, on some ice rods that you built was actually incorporate this, um, the, the rod uh, wraps or whatever they're called, or actual real abalone onto yes. your grip. On the grip. Yes. Right, because you know the grip gives you a little bit more flexibility because of the diameter. Right. Whereas uh, you can't do it on the blank, but now you got this handle section that's open yep. because you don't have to have a real seat. That's the best part. Yep. So, All right. uh, you want to get that one? Yeah, let, let me take care of this one. All Question right. of the night here. I, I love this one. Uh, why does Hunter always use his credit card for the giveaways? Why not Chris? I cannot be trusted with a credit card. That's why. That's a good point. <laughs> I'll be just all over the place. Just, you know, we'll be putting gas in the boat. And we'll be doing all kinds of things. <laughs> they, have to, they have to give me specific giveaways. Because, see, you know, like earlier tonight, we were going to give away a 5.6 CRB Color Series blank. And you were just like, shoot, hey, now whatever. I'm giving away a seven-footer. <laughs> I might put, a, you know, another one in there. No telling. I might throw some guides in there. Who knows? So, yeah, they got to be careful with me and a credit card. We can, uh, we can get wild, but hey, it's all good. I'm still here. Um, is there a way to add length to the handle to make a five foot six rod a six foot like the handle insert for an ice rod? Uh, Steve, I would, I would try my best if you're trying to look at you know the five six blank. Hopefully there's a six footer in that model. If not, yes, you can sleeve the blank. Um, you can actually use just you know a cut piece from another blank and technically you could build your handle on this and either go over the top of the butt section of that blank if you have enough clearance or if this diameter is smaller than the rod blank you're trying to work with you can sleeve it inside of it so we have shown something like that uh, and we haven't done a repair show yet but this year, you know, we might have to we might have to do that. I might have to get that out because that's always a good one too. But yes, Steve, you can. You just have to determine: Do I want to go over the blank or do I want to go into the blank? And if it's a five six, it's probably not going to have enough inner diameter to sleeve inside. You might have to go over the top. So uh, the same guy passed the gas has another good question. Uh, I'm going to tread lightly on this one. Uh, I live in California and can't get my hands on any denatured alcohol here. Is there anything else I can put in my lamp burner? Uh, 
So <laughs> I'm probably just going to use a heat gun. I'll, I'm going to I'm going to just not touch anything. Yeah. You know that I, I could do that. So I'm probably just going to use a heat gun. I personally pass the gas. I'm with you. I'm a I'm a lamp burner kind of guy. Even though people are like, oh no, the alcohol burner. I, uh, I like it. So I feel your pain. But I have come to accept using a heat gun and getting the same good results. Just, just practice a little bit. Uh, and, you know, I'm sorry. That's all I can say. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, all right, last one. Uh, is there a guide set for kid rods? Yes, absolutely. We don't per se call them, you know, guide sets for kid rods. Yeah. But you want to look in the, the CRB, um, either spinning or casting, uh, guide sets. And you want to look for the standard ring. Yep. Um, the standard ring is going to be um, your most economical option. Um, and we do have those down to, I believe, five, six. Yeah. Or six foot. Right. I can't remember. I think but like five, you six. said, it doesn't say kid rods. Right. But remember, it's going to just say, this is a standard guide set. Here's the spacing for a six foot rod. Yeah. So that right there will work just fine. If you're making it for, you know, Aunt Mava, or if you're making it for Timmy, so you'll be fine. Uh, those are just a great, those are great guides. That's the ring again. The standard ring is what's in the DF model there that we use tonight on the Zebco Halloween build. Yep. So. All right, let's do this last giveaway. It is going to be um, a CRB Color Series casting, casting kit. Kit. Yeah, a and five, a five six, a five six. Well, well it might be a seven foot. Depending, uh, you know, Chris might uh, might just it. give away whatever he wants. We'll uh -huh. see. <laughs> we shall see. Oh, this is a good name for you. Uh, Perfect. Shoot. <laughs> Let's see here. All right, it's coming out of Facebook. Uh, Bob Espinel. Okay. Espinel. Tell yes. I would have gone after. E S P E N E L. Sorry, Bob, if I mispronounce that. I do apologize. They right. they love to give me. Uh, Hard names Good to ones. pronounce. Yeah. So not only are you getting a, a rod kit, Hunter even used his credit card to buy a vowel for that too. Yeah, There's a couple of vowels. A couple of vowels. Get three E's, please. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Um, all right, well, that was a pretty fun one. That's not too bad. I, I hope you guys enjoyed it, uh, building a rod for the kids. You know, you got you to gotta do something for the kids. You know, sit down with them, do it. I remember my parents taking me into the outdoors, you know. I, I remember, you know, building like the little race car with mom and dad or the birdhouse or the, you know, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And then of course, you know, hunting and fishing and growing up like that and doing this. I never built a rod as a kid. I didn't, you know. Uh, it was certainly around. I mean, I know your dad's been doing it since the 70s. Yep. So it wasn't around, but, you know, not to, uh, I mean, I'm not tooting my own horn because I didn't, I didn't bring this to fruition. This was mud hole thing, but it's pretty cool now that you can, and it's super easy. Yeah. So you've got no excuse uh, not to help and sit down with the kids and uh, you know build them a rod. And yeah, it's cool when they wake up, you know, Christmas morning, or they get a rod for their birthday or whatever with a bow on it. But it'd be pretty cool, you know. I mean, I know I would have liked it if I, you know, at age appropriate type yeah. thing. Uh, I would have liked to have sat down and worked my way through it and thought like, oh no, I want, no, I got I want blue thread. Like, <laughs> yeah. okay, whatever. You know, or I want a redfish decal. I gotta have a redfish decal. So, uh, that's the cool part. And, you know, I think, uh, I mean, what, between the education program and the classes and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff, it's, it's pretty neat. You know, when we, when we were putting the show together and sitting with the team, it was, it was kind of neat to like see all the things that, that y'all can do and the options. It was, it was kind of neat. I mean, I, I knew that we did all that, but you know, then you start listening to that and you're like, wow, that's, you know, Anthony's teaching teachers. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We love giving back. Uh, you know, obviously yeah. the education program has come so far. I was actually talking to Anthony earlier and he said it's uh, going on 13 years now. They've done right. an education program. And I think even for rod building classes, right along the same lines, you know, oh, so. For sure. This didn't just start last year, you know, the year before. No. Almost 15 years this has been going on. So, right. yeah, super cool. That's cool. Um, so not too bad. It's 8 o'clock. We're going to get you all out of here. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we had a couple big winners tonight. 
you know, we went through that. Um, we, had, uh, we had Brian Haggerty that won that blank. We had uh, the big winner, Bob Espinel, I guess. Question mark. Buying a vowel. <laughs> and, uh, and then, of course, Jack Hartzell earlier in the show went in the Magic Marble paints and the jig skin. So that was cool. And, again, I know we're at episode 80 here. If you're not part of that uh, Rod Builders Workshop on Facebook, I mean, you know, you just, just log into your wife's or husband's Facebook account or whatever. Get on it. Uh, it's awesome, 16,000 members and continually growing. Um, and of course, I know the team put together the, the page on the website tonight. So all of these pieces and parts that we went through, Magic Marble and the skins and different things, there's the website, mudhole.com slash MHL. That's the hot link, that's the page on the site where you can find all that. So go there first. Put your cart together and then venture off into the website because it is a new website and it's pretty cool. Yep. I'm not going to lie to you. We're going on almost a month with it. And, uh, right? I think maybe something like that. Close enough. Uh, and I, I like it. I, think it. I think it's been getting some good stuff, you know? Uh, but yeah, so episode 81 is actually going to be in just a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. And Hunter is going to pick the. the I can't even say that with a straight face. We have no idea. No, of course. <laughs> we love getting, you know, tips and stuff from you guys. So if you've got something you want us to do, we have two or three things that we're probably going to lean on. But if you've got a good idea, I mean, like building the rods for the kids, that kind of came up kind of last minute. We thought it was a great option. So, yeah, come up with something. We've got a, we've got a few things planned before the end of the year. Of course, there's going to be, you know, some big things coming up. Mm -hmm. Don't want to spill the beans, but uh, yeah, I think this was a good one for episode 80. Got to do for the kids. That's it. All right, so again, thanks for everybody in the war room tonight. I know Taylor was in there. I think Birdman was in the building. Um, Steve running the Zoom tonight. He didn't have to chase us around all that much. <laughs> uh, and of course, the guys put us in the, put us in the graveyard tonight. They decorated. Uh, you know, we've got kind of the spooky vibe going. Hoffman, the design team, doing that. Um, and, of course, Jay on the ones and twos and Hunter, my left-hand man here for episode 80. Guys, I'm Chris Adams. We had a ball. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.